I'm Shira Bergbauer, and you're listening to an excerpt from the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. Absolutely. You know, and, and the thing is, too, I think right now in our society, it's almost like, um, I, what do I want to call it? It's a paradox. Like, there's so much information out there. There's a lot of information. Too much. We're, in the, we're in the information age. And while that may be helpful, it now becomes where people get caught up in analysis paralysis. Totally. And they don't know, like, what decision am I choosing for my child? And having just the resource to say, okay, these are the facts. This is how I want to parent. I actually remember a conversation with a good friend of mine. We were talking about the owl little socks. And, you know, in anesthesia, like, we're all about monitoring all the things. And she said, oh, are you going to get the owl? And I was like, no. And she's like, why not? And I go, I don't think that's how I want to parent. Mm. And this was before I had my daughter. And I just realized there was so much power in that response Yeah, that I could say, I understand that you would want that for you. And I totally respect that and love that for you. But I don't want to parent like that. And we are both right. Like, you're right and I'm right. But we are in a place in society where there's so much information and there's a lot of overwhelm because people just don't know which which one is the right decision so this book is absolutely needed in this time so thank, thank you. you thank you thank you thank, thank you. you now moving away from babies i want to touch a little bit about the whole brain child and like the the just like the snippet of the science behind the whole brain child because i so there's like a I, i'm a mnemonic and it was like the left brain is literal and the right brain is like, so there's like L, 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 L. And I was like, oh, so when my toddler is doing something, I'm like, is this your right brain or your left brain? <laughs> <laughs> my husband's a very like skeptical, questioning, sciencey kind of person. You know, like I'll tell him something like, oh, I think, you know, we need to like reconnect and like, you know, he, he'll try to explain the thing to her in the, in the time that it's happening. And even in our relationship, it's always been like that. Like if I lost my keys, in the time that I was looking for my keys would be the time that my dear husband is telling me why I should be responsible. And right. so even with our daughter, it's like when she's in the high of the emotion and I'm like, please just like, don't like, just let her be, but reconnect. And he's like, yeah, I actually think that works. And I'm like, you think it works? Like, cause I'm like, Oh, you believe in the science. Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm all about what's effective, right? Like it's, this is effective. And so you know, what's really interesting about the whole brain child is, um, it's coming up on its 10 year anniversary, which I just cannot believe. And I actually had the best criticism I've ever gotten about the whole brain child a couple of weeks ago on Instagram. Someone did a book review and she loved the book. And then she said, you know, I'm not really sure it's revolutionary though. The the subtitle is 12 revolutionary strategies. She's like, it wasn't really revolutionary. I feel like I've heard this before. And to me, that was the best compliment anyone could ever give me because this book has sold over a million copies and it is, it has really permeated the way we think about parenting in our, in our culture. Um, and the book is in over 60 languages. It's all over the world. I'm so proud of this. And I think, thank goodness it's not revolutionary because it's the, it's, it's something people have heard. Like that's, you know, that's really what our, our dream was for this book is for people to know this. Right. And so here's the basic idea. And and yeah, we talk about different types of parts of the brain working together, like the left brain and the right brain and all that. But the main idea in the book is that when, and I won't get too sciencey because it can get really, really in the weeds, but really when we look at the way that the nervous system works and the way other systems work, like cloud formations and other kinds of systems when the differentiated parts that are specialized to do their own jobs, parts of the system, all also get functionally linked with each other, the system becomes more flexible and adaptive and coherent, meaning it does what makes sense, and more energized and more stable. So so FACES is our acronym for that. What that means is that we really can understand the different parts of our child's brain and what they really specialize in And think about the way that we understand their behavior from that perspective. And our job then is to help these parts of the brain develop and get linked up with each other so that they can have whole brains that are integrated. You know, that's just revolutionary, really, still. I think the idea that when we're in a reactive state, when our nervous system 
is really reactive, we can't process information very well. And Stephen Porges has done some beautiful work in his polyvagal theory talking about how when we're in dysregulated states where we're really overwhelmed and, and really reactive, even our inner ear muscle or our, our inner ear changes so that it's harder to hear the human voice. Like we're talking, talking, talking. It's not just that the left hemisphere can't process all that information. That's true. When we have huge emotional tsunamis, we can't process language and logic and all of those things. But it's also that our social engagement circuitry starts to turn off, right? That's kind of more the upstairs, downstairs brain stuff that we talk about. So I just think it's so powerful, you know, and and in no drama discipline, we talk about how the whole point and purpose of discipline is to help children build skills so that they become self-disciplined people that requires teaching. And so every discipline moment is a teaching moment. And a lot of what we do in the name of discipline is actually counterproductive because we react to our kids in ways that make them more reactive and less likely to actually learn. And so that's where really understanding, oh, my kid's having an emotional tsunami right now. They can't process language. They can't process logic. They can't even listen very well. Now's the worst time to teach the lesson. Right now, what my kid needs is connection first to soothe their nervous system so they can get back into this regulated state so then they can really listen and learn in that moment. So it really is rethinking what behavior is about, what it's communicating, and what's happening in our brains. I'm Shira Bergbauer, and you're listening to an excerpt from the Stethoscopes to Swaddles podcast. You can listen to the whole episode wherever you get your podcasts, and look out for new episodes out every Monday. You're doing a great job, Mama. I'll see you next week. Bye now. Bye now.